So, graduation day is on the 17th, which is a Thursday, and I will be attending the graduation day ceremony. That moves. No leaning. Um, so, I'm actually, I'm really looking forward to it, but I'm also, like, really sad for it at the same time, because a lot of my favorite kids are ninth graders. That's no secret. You know, it's people like Awesome Enthusiastic Kid, Concho King, My Bodyguard, um, Broken Foot Kid, Cliff Man. You know, just some of the, some of the kids are the most enthusiastic and entertaining aspects to them are going to be graduating. Um, but you know, there's still, there's still 8th graders and 7th graders who will be becoming older, you know. I'll still have, like, precious baby deer face kid and fluffy pink pencil case kid and cliff boy. Plus I'll be gaining a bunch of new 6th graders who will be coming 7th graders. So, that'll be nice. But I'm pretty excited for the, um, graduation ceremony. Plus, um, the entire school attends it, so everyone goes to the graduation ceremony, and then after the graduation ceremony is over, everyone goes home, including me. So I'm pretty happy about that. It's going to be like a two-hour school day. So, I mean, so again, I'm looking forward to it, but also not. Um, oh my god. I was so exhausted at the beginning of the day, because I had, I had a class first period, and I don't normally have a class first period. Um, and it was like one of my least favorite classes. And a disruptive kid, who you can probably guess what his personality is based on his nickname, disruptive kid, was being super disruptive today. And um, the teacher's threats were always so empty. She's always like, I'm gonna tell your teacher. And he's like, whatever, like he doesn't care. And I was like, you were just useless, just a useless person. And I, I felt so, I felt so mean thinking that, but I was just like, you know, he would just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and loudly too and everyone around him was starting to get really annoyed I could tell they all wanted to like move on to the lesson but he was like not shutting up um, and it, it sh it's not fair one kid shouldn't be able to dictate the the um, the class's progress you know it's just it's just lame um, so, at the school, there's a thing where, um, if you live a certain distance from the school, like, if you're close enough, then you don't have to, I mean, then, then you're not allowed to ride your bike. You have to walk, because I guess there's only a certain amount of spaces for, um, bikes at the school. But, um, apparently some kid this morning was late, so he rode his bike to school, and he's one of the kids who's not supposed to ride his bike to school. But, there's scandal involved, you see. He actually lives in the zone of a different middle school. But, he didn't like that middle school, so he came to this one. The only way to do that is to say that he moved. But he didn't move. He just said that he did. May, um, they pretended his address was like his aunt's or something, who lives in this area. So, he actually lives very far away, but according to his address, he lives very close, so he's not allowed to ride his bike. He has to walk every day. He has to leave, like, an hour early. You know, he, he is a really far walk. I was talking to one of the teachers today, and he got in trouble because he rode his bike, because he's not allowed to ride his bike. And then this teacher is his homeroom teacher, so he's like one of the only people who knows this secret. So he was like, I feel so bad for him. But he had to be reprimanded, and I, I guess he like didn't get to go outside for the, for the break. He had to stay inside to be lectured by all the teachers. And I was I felt I felt really bad for him too because this is the kid that I saw at the mall who has like the brightest smile on the planet and he's I I just felt really bad seeing him so depressed and so like frowny and it's totally legitimate he should be able to ride his bike I think I think anyone should be able to ride their bike you know who cares if there's if there if not every bike can fit into a slot because there's a certain amount of slots in the front it's just dumb I think anyway. I have another thing, but I don't feel like doing it right now. Maybe later.
So the role-playing kid cracked me up again today. Um, we didn't role-play, <clears throat> but uh, he tried to get it to happen. I was sitting in a different group again, and um, one of the kids wanted to talk to me and couldn't figure out what to talk about. And the role-playing, we'll call him Pikachu. Pikachu just comes up and he's like, dude, seriously, just role-play. The kid was like, no, that's really stupid. So <laughs> then we started talking about Mario somehow. I forget exactly how we got onto the subject, but um, we started talking about Mario and how the characters have different names and stuff. And um, whenever I would say a character and I'd translate it, we'd figure out what it was, Pikachu decided that he wanted to do an impression of them. <laughs> so he was like doing an impression of the Koopa Troopas and he had like, he was like creeping. It was really funny. And then he, he did an impression of a Goomba. He like got down and like crab walked with his hands over his head. And then of course he did an impression of Princess Peach, which was special to say the least. I don't even know where this kid came from. I seriously, he's never even spoken to me, but for the past three days, he's just been such an epic addition to the cast of characters that I'm going to miss when he graduates. So, it's funny stuff. I had a good time. So today the kids had a uh, listening test and I got to read it! And it was weird. I had to struggle to keep myself from laughing once I got to the punchline. Here it is. Ready? Long ago there was a town. A statue was in the center. A statue of a happy prince. It was the most beautiful statue in the world. It was covered with gold and diamonds. Of course, I read much slower for the kids. One day in fall, a swallow came to the center of the town. It was the last swallow in the town. The other swallows were already in the south. The swallow was tired, so it stayed under the prince that night. Late at night, the swallow felt something cold on its head. It, it said, is it raining? The swallow looked up. The prince was crying. What's the matter, prince? It asked. The prince said, I'm crying because there are so many poor people in my town. They have no money. The prince asked the swallow, please take my golden diamonds and give them to the poor people. So the, so the swallow carried the golden diamonds to the poor people. Then they had some money. They bought food for many days. The swallow worked and worked for the prince and the people were happier than, than before. So pretty... So far, it's pretty standard, right? Winter came and the swallow needed to go south, but it was too tired. On the first snowy day, the swallow died under the statue of the prince. The prince had no more golden diamonds. So up till that point, it's, it's kind of weird, but it's pretty standard. Then, this last paragraph with no... I read you the whole story. There's no build up to this, no transition, no by the way. Just this happens. God said to an angel, I want to see the two most beautiful things in the town. Bring them here. The angel went to the town and found the prince and the dead swallow. The angel said, you are the two most beautiful things in the town. You worked harder than anyone for the people of the town. They went up to the sky to God. <laughs> I was like, what? I was not expecting that ending. It was so, so random and so weird and such like a yay, happy ending. Okay, it was, it was a weird. I was reading it out loud and I got to that part and I didn't really know what to do. Um, anyway. <clears throat> I don't have very many stories. Oh, you know what? Kancho King has been so weird. Ever since I saw him at the train station, he has been acting funny. Like, hilarious, actually. So, he sits in the front row all the way to the left, and I usually stand all the way to the right near the window so I can stand in the sun because I'm freaking cold! So, he's in the front row all, all the way on the other side of the room. So I'm standing there and I'm reading this little piece of work, this wonderful story. And um, I look up, and there he is in the front row doing this. Like aiming at me with a gun. And then once he sees me look up, he goes, Poof. And I was like, 
<laughs> why? Why did you shoot me? Like, I didn't even know what to do. And then I had to go back and read this crazy story with this image in my head of myself being shot. I was like, that wasn't nice. And then, um, yesterday, if you read the description of yesterday's video, it says, Concha King tried to hug me. He did. I was going up the stairs, and he was coming down the stairs. And instead of getting out of my way, because I was on the correct side of the stairs, he was on the incorrect side of the stairs, instead of getting out of my way, he puts out his arms and he like starts leaning towards me like this. And I was just like, <laughs> I like back up and I was like, no, that's okay, I don't, I don't, I don't want that. And he's just like, okay, <laughs> and then keeps going, I was like, you're being weird. So. I don't know, maybe he thinks that we have like a special connection now because we saw each other at the train. I don't know! Okay. And I have been trolled by three people so far who have contacted me and told me that they have all of my videos downloaded, but then turns out that they didn't. So, um, and I also haven't heard anything back from YouTube, so I'm thinking I'm just going to start up the video obituaries again and mourn the loss of the videos that are probably not going to be returned. That's all. Have a nice day. Goodbye. And when I said that's all, I meant that's all except for the fact that there's 38 more days until something epic happens!